Hey, it's Garrett Biz. Thanks for checking out this video real quickly. First, I want to announce an exciting challenge I've got coming up in one week. So starting May 13th, I'll be doing a five day uh, greater meaning, purpose and joy in your recovery challenge. So five days to greater meaning, purpose and joy. If you're interested, please click the link. I'll drop something in the description. I want you to sign up right now so you can take place or uh, participate in that so you can be a part of it. Uh, so I read, I was reading something this weekend. It really kind of touched me and made me realize something that I misunderstood for a long time about addiction. A lot of people talk about how the addictive nature of a substance or a behavior is what determines whether somebody becomes addicted. And there's a lot of people that say or suggest that anybody, no matter who you are, if you were to expose yourself to or be exposed to some of the most addictive substances like cocaine or crystal meth or opiate, especially heroin, that instantaneously you'll become addicted or after a couple of times you'll become addicted. So that's really something that I believe and something that I've um, you know, even shared with other people. But what I was reading this weekend helped me realize that that's not necessarily the case. Uh, though the addictive nature of something can contribute to the addictive qualities and whether or not somebody will become addicted to it, it's not really, it's not necessarily the case. And the study I was reading talked about the Vietnam veterans. So there was one, uh, one element of Vietnam veterans that made them I don't know, really, I guess good for this study or good for a, you know, studying the correlating effects of the addictive substances and ultimately whether be people become addictive. So one thing about these Vietnam veterans that uh, they found that about 20% of them were addicted to heroin, were regularly using heroin the times that, or the, for the whole time that they were uh, over in Vietnam. And what common knowledge would suggest is that those same, those 20% of veterans, when they came home, they would continue to be addicted to heroin as I was uh, under the impression of that once somebody became, ex was exposed to it only under some very hard, uh, therapy and a lot of help and support, could they ever become, uh, you know, become, uh, free from, or be in recovery from a uh, long-term heroin use. But what the study shows is that even, uh, many of them never receiving any kind of treatment for their for their misuse problems, their their uh, their opioid problems, their heroin problems. About 95% of them, after one year from coming home, were not using heroin at all. Many, most of them just came home and they stopped using the drug. They probably went through some short-term withdrawal. I'm sure they went through some short-term withdrawal, but they never continued that habit. They never continued their use of the opioids. And what this shows me is the importance of many contributing factors that, that actually play a much bigger part in whether or not somebody becomes addicted than the addictive nature of a substance. And some of those contributing factors are, you know, a person's subjective well-being, their quality of life, how well they are engaged in things, how much meaning, how much purpose they have, how uh, their social connection, how many, uh, how good are their friendships, how good are their relationships that they have. These things are actually, um, can be greater contributing factors to whether or not somebody becomes uh, long-term addicted to a substance or behavior. And what this made me think about was the importance of, or the, the possibility for using some greater screening measures uh, in our current medical practices before uh, exposing somebody or prescribing somebody opioids for long-term use. So what I didn't understand, and one thing that took me a while to understand was I thought that you know, when you look at the numbers of the people that are dying from opioid overdoses and from uh, many addictive related issues over the last uh, over the last couple of years, as many as 70,000 people died last year alone because of addictive rate related issues or consequences. <clears throat> so one, th one thing I was under the impression of was that if somebody was exposed to an opioid, the chances that they were going to become addicted was really high. And if they, if they took it for a long period of time, that the chance that they're going to become addicted is, is really high. Um, and I didn't understand why doctors and why uh, the pharmaceutical companies were saying otherwise and why they were arguing that, you know, opioids, when used correctly, can be a very effective tool. You know, the many doctors say, you know, this is a, a great tool that I have for somebody who's in chronic pain or somebody who's going to be in chronic pain, something that can help relieve that pain and suffering uh, while their body heals. But what I didn't understand was why would you put something that could be so dangerous into so many people's hands? And if you look at the numbers, you see how many people are passing away, how many people are having consequences. Um, but in actuality, less than 10% of people that are exposed to opioids for pain relief or pain management, even over a long period of time, less than 10% actually become addicted. And, but that 10%, 
is an extremely high number. That 10% still contributes to that, that massive number, that the enormous uh, ep epidemic proportion number of 65 to 70,000 people that are passing away. But what I started to think was what if, what, what if we could narrow down that list? And what if we could identify that 10% that, we, that, you know, that were higher risk and make sure that they were never prescribed those pain reliever medications that were found, uh, or if they were, they had much greater oversight, much uh, closer controls on them. And if we look at some other elements, some other contributing factors to whether or not somebody becomes addicted to a substance over the long term, I think that we could narrow that list down. We could whittle that list down so that so many people weren't, uh, so often we hear that story of people that, are, that didn't become addicted until they, were, they uh, had an accident or you know, some kind of injury and then they were prescribed opioids and then became uh, you know, addicted over the long term. That, that story is one that we hear way too often. Well, what if we could develop some other kind of screening tools to even to see if a person had greater potential? Um, there are many other contributing factors. Of course, there's a lot of discussion about genes and genetics and whether or not you're genetically predisposed to addiction. Of course, this, the addictive nature of a substance is a contributing factor, but there's other things that we could potentially screen for. Those quality of life things, look at somebody's social structure, look at their employment or their engagement and see if they're engaged in things that provide some source of meaning and purpose because of some of those things are missing, a person's propensity towards or the chance that they'll become addicted to something is much greater. So if we could identify people that have that greater, that greater chance for becoming addicted uh, and we could screen, you know, help screen those people, we could reduce that number. This could be something that we, uh, that could make massive impact or have a drastic influence on this opioid epidemic. But if we continue to just assume that it's the addictive nature of a substance, then that really kind of disempowers us. It disempowers people that are exposed to these things. But when we can look at other things that we can control more easily, like how much somebody's engaged, what kind of social connection they have, what kind of network they have, what kind of you know uh, subjective well-being they have in their life, these are things that we can control more easily. This empowers us to do something to change uh, a person's individual situation and greatly reduce their chance of becoming addicted over the long term. So uh, something I've been thinking about, just want to share it with you. Maybe, uh, maybe this will help you or make you think of some things or, or come up with some ideas on how you can either live more fully into your own recovery or help somebody else who's either struggling or living in recovery. Either way, um, I'd love for you to be a part of this challenge starting next week. And if you click the link below, you can register for that and I'll, I'll get you signed up so that you get those uh, the challenges and the exercise emailed to you daily for five days. It's a free challenge. So I hope you check it out. Have a great one.